Hello and welcome to Touching the Sunrise podcast. I am Sister Catherine Herms, author of Surviving Depression, A Catholic Approach, and Reclaim Regret, How God Heals Life's Disappointments, and Spiritual Guide in the Heartwork Program, which specializes in helping people walk the road of spiritual growth and inner healing. For the past 10 years, I have been walking alongside wonderful women and men who want a more heart-centered and spiritual life, but would like support along the way, through online programs, groups, and one-on-one spiritual guidance. I walk with people along a contemplative and healing path, one that has been trodden for thousands of years. Basically, I'm here to help you surrender to the power of the Holy Spirit, who has come to make your being the throne of the Holy Trinity, so that your life, your prayer, your relationships, your dreams and goals will most deeply satisfy the desires of your heart. You can find out more about me and what God has led me to do in the world by visiting my website, touchingthesunrise.com. Let's start, as we always do, by reconnecting, remembering, refreshing. Take a deep breath directly into your heart even deeper than your heart, into that soul, that spirit, that place where divine grace transforms you with the presence, the light, and the life of the divine trinity. We enter into our inner world, to that sacred space, that inner sanctuary where God dwells. Notice what that room, that space is like. Is it large or small? Is it dark or light? What is the feel of that place? It is in that space, wherever that sacred place for us is that we experience Jesus calling us his true friend, his darling one, his fair one. We're not used to hearing ourselves called lovely, beautiful, wanted, good. But Jesus looks beyond everything we see in ourselves. And he looks at the motives of our heart. He sees all we have been through. And he wants to free us. He wants to free you. He can look at everything that we would call ugly and messy. And he can still call us lovely where we see blemishes and pain and sorrow. He sees beauty. He sees our future. All our lives we've sought to be loved and needed. We need His love, only His love, to bring us true healing. We are convinced, no doubt, that God sees us as we see ourselves, but that is not so. God sees us through his own love, his own fidelity, the the pleasure he had in creating us still remains. The dreams he had in making us still fill his heart. And like the hound of heaven, as Francis Thompson said, He's still seeking us out. He's still opening up for us ways into the beauty of his dream for us. God has thought about us all our life, even before we were born. God knew us. And God wants to bring us whole and entire, beautiful, 
into heaven to be with him for all eternity. So let our hearts, let your heart, call out to this God of love. Let us surrender to the work of the Spirit within us. I have to admit my heart is still quietly denying that all of this is happening at all. Coronavirus, pandemic, COVID-19, lockdown, quarantine, social distancing, getting the country back on its feet, returning to work. There is a tiny place in me that is still shutting the door to it all and hoping that when I wake up tomorrow, everything will be back the way it was before Christmas. I still haven't exactly come to terms within myself that something irreversible has happened to us all. Like other worldwide life-changing struggles through which humanity has emerged throughout history, This too will change everything about our lives. We will mourn the loss of much. Eventually, though, we will rejoice at positive inventions and policy changes that will see us into what will be. We are already seeing a touch of that in the new ways that we are discovering. We can use the internet for education, for work, and for telemedicine. But really, the most important shift for each of us will be what shifts within. In these lockdown months, I've found myself craving chocolate. More significantly, though, I've been more sensitive. I've fallen back into issues that have circled through my life periodically, in the past 50 years. With boundaries gone, I've felt unsafe and insecure. The larger questions of life have been surfacing. Again, what do I really need? Who am I? Do I like who I have become? It isn't just the pandemic or the lockdown that affects us. It's all the unexpected and almost random divestments in our life that we have borne because of the lockdown. If I lose my job, for example, or my role, I lose the cluster behaviors and friends, responsibilities and perks, schedules that were once associated with it. I lose my sense of me that that job helped create the meaning that I or my life had in that position. Overnight, at times with nothing to replace it. Other situations have arisen like knots in our days. I may be discouraged if I can't keep my family happy in this new situation. I'm not great at homeschooling, entertaining, encouraging, working from home, providing in this new way. Who am I as a daughter or son when I can't take care of my parents because I can't get to them when they most need me? What if a project I worked on all last year has now been scrapped in this post-coronavirus world? How do I find the energy to go forward, the purpose to begin again, or change careers? How do I make the best decision in the face of an unknown future? The anxiety that has bubbled just below the surface, capsizing my frightened heart through all the experiences I've had during the lockdown has brought me in touch with anxiety issues that are nothing new. They have been woven through my life and have affected me spiritually and emotionally. This may be happening to you. 
Perhaps you are touching more keenly the wounds of PTSD or obsessive compulsive disorder, scrupulosity, midlife losses as sands are shifting, grief, emotional struggles, depression, fear. I'm reminded of what I was once told by a wise mentor. What is important is not the situations themselves, but how we are with these situations that are calling us to doubt or question and fear ourselves and sometimes life itself. The realities that we live through can bring on headaches, sleeplessness, dissociation, emotional distress, and sometimes these can last for weeks and months and years. At times, we are aware of how all this is wearing on us physically, psychologically, and spiritually. At other times, it remains a secret, even from ourselves. Mindful practices, awareness, exercises, contemplative presence can help us come home to who we are, as we are, in whatever space we are in. Here's an exercise in awareness that you may find helpful. Take a moment to close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. Drop any expectations, plans, ideals, memories, anyone or anything outside of this moment and relax. Notice the sensations of touch, sound, taste, and smell. Notice where you are sitting and the weight of your body. Be aware of any feelings that you are experiencing. Become aware of what manifests itself within you as you say slowly these four sentences. I am feeling something. I am aware of my body. I am experiencing something. I am aware of my emotions. I am resisting something. I am aware of my thoughts and beliefs. I am more than all this. Drop down deeper into your heart. into the center of your soul. Into the seat of awareness, the light which holds the light that you are. Into that place where God has made his home within you. where God reigns as king, where he teaches and leads and comforts as shepherd. In this place, in this place that is beneath 
on the turmoil of the day and the times. In this very ground of your being, in this vast abyss of sight, of light, of life, filled with the Trinity's love. In this space, quietly bow your head to the ground and adore. God has amazing ways of knocking on people's hearts, awakening desires, arousing questions, provoking an unexpected spiritual fire. Remember, if you'd like some extra support and are ready to embark on a sustained spiritual journey, you can connect with me in a number of ways by going to my website, touchingthesunrise.com. So until the next time, take care of yourself. And remember that you are not alone. You are loved no matter what. And when you search within yourself, you will not only find yourself, but the throne of the Divine Trinity. You have a calling, a mission, and every gift, every grace, every moment, even every fall, mistake, and sin is a step toward your completely and wholly being taken up into the mystery of God's love for you and for all creation. Remember always that you have a treasure of inexpressible joy hidden in an earthen vessel, small and fragile. May this overflowing joy fill you and yours with this fragrance. God be with you.